So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our 2025 press conference at our anniversary year live at our Festo booth. We're celebrating 100 years of passion, 100 years of innovation, and 100 years of Festo. And we are very glad to have you all here live at our booth. So before we start uh, with our press conference, let's briefly have a look into our uh, agenda. We're starting with two very interesting speeches, starting with Mr. Thomas Beck, our uh, chairman of the management board, followed by Mr. Frank Knotts, member of the management board responsible for sales. Afterwards, you all get a chance to raise your questions during the uh, Q&A session. And after the Q&A session, we all have a booth tour together. So you will be divided into three groups. I will give you some more information uh, later. After the booth tour, there is lunch. That's uh, a very important point for you. So please come back uh, right to this spot. We have lunch together. We have time for networking. And you have obviously also time to raise your questions to Mr. Berg, to Mr. Knotts, and to the other, other members of the management board. You will get some very interesting um, presentations and you will hear very inspiring speakers. Um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ansgar Krivet, board member of R&D, Mr. Gerhard Boro, board member of IT and digitalization, and Mr. Jörg Kipper, he's the head of our sales cluster DACH. They will also give you some more insights about the highlights that we're having with us here at Hannover Messe. And now, let's dive into our world of motion, and I'm very proud to hand you over now to the CEO of Festo, Mr. Thomas Berg. Festo sets the world in motion by enabling the production of nearly everything we use, need, drive, or consume in our everyday life. From parts, pills, and parcels, to cars, drills, and stem cells. From software to hardware. From innovation to implementation. From maintenance to confidence. From learning from nature to working with nature. From pneumatics to electrics and synergies created in the mix. Easily moving what matters. With the best holistic motion portfolio from one hand in a simply perfect choreography. We elevate industry standards to new highs and drive emissions to new lows. We set the course with insightful advice and by answering complex questions to create the best possible applications with automation and education. This is our promise to our customers. This is what moves us. Automation for a world in motion. Festo. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this special event, the Hannover Fair 2025, a special year for all of us because we are celebrating our 100th anniversary. Festo was founded in 1925 by Albert Fetzer and Gottlieb Stahl. Uh, we, they have started building woodworking machines, so the first idea of uh, automation was already started here. Simplifying work, heavy work, simplifying also the business for, for the customers in that time. And ever since, uh, the company grew out of the city of Esslingen am Neckar. So very, very rural. And we had a uh, very successful time over the years. You can imagine, uh, 100 years means a lot of innovation, also means weathering crises, also having success, growth, in, in different areas, even you would call it in startup language now some pivotal uh, moves or elements. So the world was changing ever after and we are more than happy to celebrate together with you, together with our customers, our partners. This year is a very special moment for Festo. In 1925, the company was founded. It was called Fetzer and Stahl. 
which became Festo over time. And as I said, we have been started as a woodworking machinery till the 1950s. And then the Stahl brothers, uh, Kurt Stahl and Wilfried Stahl, brought the idea of industrial automation with the, the new technology they have seen in North America to Europe. And this is the basis now of the company Festo as you know it today. So all the ideas in, in, in innovation, in automation, in automation came from that point on. And I called it a pivotal moment because really that meant to change the business model overall. And finally also meant that Festo has a, a, a point in development where we build on also up to these days. Till the 1970s, technology evolved. So a lot of innovation was there, different types of valves and end cylinders, motion, all the kinds of application you in principle would even see today, but maybe in, in a different way of, of uh, application. A lot of mechanics, that was the phase of pneumatics and the beginning also of internationalization because some of the, the very early uh, uh, subsidiaries have been founded already in the 50s and 60s. And what also was, was uh, founded there was Festo Didactic because the brothers also understood that technology is one thing, but the take up of the technology also meant a lot to the people because then it could accelerate the knowledge about technology uh, also in the way it is applied in factories. So Festo Didactics was founded in 1965 and still it, it's prevailing and we are world market leader in technical education at uh, uh, vocational schools but also at universities. So it goes together, technical development, technical changes, transformation, always combined with education. In the 70s up till the 90s, the company grew very fast and we added a lot of uh, products, difference and variances, still very European based, but also uh, some, some of the subsidiaries now in, in, in uh, for example, uh, South Africa or in Canada were founded at that time. So it, it grew into a, I would call it international company. Uh, but also with a lot of product complexity that was uh, uh, developing uh, uh, further and further. And uh, till the 90s, we have uh, also jumped into the kind of industry segment. So we subdivided our core knowledge into the specification of uh, different industries where we developed specific applications to the technology fields that, for example, the, the automotive industry or the food industry or other industries have been using. So a lot of specific knowledge was also developed on the Festomer side, always with a focus on the customer. Till the years 2010 up till today, of course, a lot of electronics and software development came into play. So up to uh, applications that we, uh, you will hear about it, like, like uh, artificial intelligence, the foundation was already laid in 2010 with uh, microcontrollers, software systems we have been developing with system solution. So that again was one of the foundations of the success of today. Speaking about innovation, the core of Festo as the, the innovation leader, we have started with different very ruggedized type valves that are still in the market, the Tiger valve. Also, later on, the valve terminal, more or less setting the standard for, for more compact design in, in pneumatics, in, in industrial automation, reducing also the effort of uh, the, the wiring and, and the pneumatic uh, hosing. You have to be, be organizing around the machines. And then CPX, the terminal, was the first application as a very modular way of I.O. signals we, we could convert and use also in our PLCs. We had the electric cylinder in 2006. And what I like very much is the energy efficiency module, which could uh, uh, sense leakages or uh, imperfection or motion that is maybe not, not well meant to be fast enough. So a lot of those inventions like AX, for example, CPX, API, or the Festo Didactic lead now to the way we are communicating with our customer based on technology. 
So, some of you, I think, you already have been awaiting about the figures. The year 2024 was a good year. We have uh, 3.45 billion euro in total turnover. It was a minus of 5.5% compared to the previous year. We have seen growth in North America, in India, and South America, especially also in the, in the part of didactics. We kept our employees at 20,600 employees on a stable level. 8,200 in Germany, also stable. And we even uh, increased the investment we put into R&D up to 8.8% compared to the total turnover. Finally, I have to say, it was a successful year because we laid the foundation for future growth. Uh, the results are positive and comparable to the year 23, and that builds the foundation also for the future. So we are optimistic because we don't have any backlog in uh, investments, also in R&D, and we are looking very much prepared into the future because uh, we are present in all growth areas in the industry, in different segments, also in the countries all around the world. So we are an international growing company. We are going global. And you see the markets we are in. So already now we can see the first signs of a growth period coming up. Their, their industry is already starting. So we see customers now investing into us and into their factories. And we are looking very much into the future with a positive foresight. So now, from the best product to the best partner, Frank Knotts, our sales uh, board member, will show you how we do that. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Thank you very much, Thomas Beck. Let me take this positive spark and take this into the future because I think it's extremely important that we take the first three months which are quite positive also into a bright future. And you have seen this slogan here from best products to be best partner. And I think this is important that we are not only focusing on the product itself, which is of course very important, but also on a more holistic collaboration between our customers and ourselves in order to tackle the challenges that are there for our customers and of course also for us. What are these challenges? And I think we all would agree that we face an increased competition. So we have to contribute for our customers to overcome price aggressiveness, speed, and so therefore we also have to contribute to that. Global supply chains, of course, uh, also when we look at today's um, disruptions, I would call them, it's more important than ever. And Thomas Beck uh, mentioned also, we are prepared, we are setting up local for local strategies in order to maintain a very high delivery quality. And then of course we also and our customers face new technologies. And here on the exhibition, uh, artificial intelligence, digital world, it's a big topic and uh, everybody has to get into this topic because it is defining and determining the future. So this is why we look at it from a more holistic uh, perspective, not the single component only. And therefore, you see a lot also when you go later on and join the booth, we talk about seamless automation. And I would like to explain you what do we mean with seamless. For many years, we have had, of course, pneumatic components, electric components, components for process industry. We had solutions also for education and learning. So this is what I call the horizontal portfolio. But when we talk about seamless automation, it's also the connectivity from the PLC down to the device in the field. So this is the vertical. Uh, dimension And there is also the third dimension when we take the customer journey uh, from the decision to design a component to the operation later on in the final operation site. So these three di dimensions you will see later on also in our booth, the vertical, the portfolio, the integration in terms of uh, control architecture and the digital journey along 
all the customer processes. And just a little, digging a little bit deeper, and you see the hardware, my colleague Gerhard Borro will explain this to you in length, how we connect from the PLC down to the individual sensors. And it's not only the connection, it's also how we save with that design resources in order to become much, much faster and enable our customer to be more competitive. We call it best fit in automation, and there's a lot of new ideas, also our edge controller to be seen at the booth. So this is the portfolio. The second element is, again, the customer process. From the engineering phase, what you see here, to the procurement phase, to the assembly and commissioning and the operation, how can we make the life of our customer in each step easier? And so therefore, we also have developed a lot of tools to support that, from simulation, from selection, to the digital twin, which is of course super important uh, for the future, to automation suite where you can already have your pre-configured software that you created in the selection of the process later on when you assemble uh, the component. So this is what we mean, let's think holistically. Of course, innovation is super important. Innovation is the entrance ticket, but with additional tools, with additional software, we are uh, enabling our customer to succeed with their technology. And of course, there's much more uh, around this digital ecosystem, um, which is for us very uh, relevant, and that's the future also. And of course, why do we do this? Because at the end, there's, there's one important thing. It's all about productivity. It's productivity in the design process, it's productivity in the operation of the machines. This is the overarching element. We all do these things in order to increase the productivity of our customers. And of course, you can break it down, easiness of selection, easiness of installation, using best fit uh, tools and to combine it to a, to, a, to a system. It's also easy is speed. Nobody has time anymore, and so with that approach, uh, we, we add a lot of, uh, what we say, benefits uh, on the entire process for our customers. This is, in a, in a nutshell, uh, the teaser. You will see more details uh, on the booth when you join the booth tour, uh, and my colleagues are more than happy to explain in great detail um, your questions. And uh, so therefore, we also created this new slogan, automation for a world in motion. And I, I would say we all agree, there's a lot of motion in the machines of our customers, but the world is also in motion. So uh, we, we, we like that a lot. And uh, so thank you very much for listening, for this brief uh, presentation. And now we have a couple of minutes for your questions. And I would like to ask also Thomas Beck uh, coming on stage. Thank you for listening. <laughs>